Thanks, Jim. Welcome to the May meeting of the Northport Conservation Commission. My name is Greg Young. I'm the chair of the commission. And this open meeting of the Northport Conservation Commission is being conducted remotely, consistent with Governor Baker's executive order of March 12, 2020, due to the current state of emergency in the Commonwealth due to the outbreak of the COVID-19 virus. In order to mitigate the transmission of the COVID-19 virus, the town of Northboro has been advised and directed by the Commonwealth to suspend public gatherings. And as such, the governor's order suspends the requirement of the open meeting law to have all meetings in a publicly accessible physical location. All members of the Northboro Conservation Commission are allowed and encouraged to participate remotely. The order allows Northboro Conservation Commission to meet entirely remotely, so long as reasonable public access is afforded so that the public can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. The public is encouraged to follow along using the posted agenda, unless the chair notes otherwise. Members of the public who wish to view the live stream of this meeting may do so by going to Northborough Remote Meetings on YouTube via the link listed on the agenda. Ensuring public access does not ensure public participation unless such participation is required by law. This meeting will feature public comment. Members, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Dan Clark. Here. Justin Dufresne. Here. Diane Goldner. Here. Kelly Marston. Here. Very good. Staff, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Mia McDonald. Here. Jim DiGiorgio. DiGiulio, pardon me, Jim. Here, thank you. And um, Tom has just joined us as well. And Tom Beals. Tom, you're muted. Can you hear us? Yeah, there we go. Okay. Takes, took a second to unmute. I am here. Very good. Okay. So meeting business ground rules. The chair will invite each speaker or applicant on the agenda by name to make a presentation and speak to their application. Participants will provide their full name and hold until their name is called. Each speaker will be asked to mute their phone or computer when not speaking and to speak clearly and in a way that helps generate accurate meeting minutes. Those responding will be asked to wait until the floor is yielded to them by the chair. Speakers who wish to respond to the comments of others do so through the chair, taking care to identify themselves. Each vote taken by the board or committee will be conducted by roll call vote. After members have spoken, we will afford public comment as follows. By phone, dial star nine to raise your hand and wait to be recognized by the chair. Please note that part of your phone number will be visible to those viewing this meeting. By Zoom, click raise hand on the bottom of your screen and wait to be recognized by the chair. I will ask members of the public who wish to speak to identify their names and addresses only. Once we have a list of all public commentators, the chair will call on each by name and afford three minutes for any comments. Okay. Would you like me to read the notice? I would, Diane, thank you. You ready? I'm ready. Okay. The meeting will include the following hearings pursuant to Mass General Laws, Chapter 131, Section 40, Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act and the Northboro Wetlands Protection Bylaw. Abbreviated Notice of Resource Area Delineation 4, 0, 95 and 97 Lincoln Street, Map 62, Parcel 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8 by Hamid Hatami, Prestige Property Development. That's it. Very good. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, before we get into the minutes, a um, couple, of, couple of administrative items here. First of all, um, happy belated Mother's Day to Diane and Kelly and Mia and Melanie. So... Hope you had a good time. Hope you're well taken care of. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Same. Also, Kelly, thanks to you. Thank you for presenting at the town meeting. I did watch the other <laughs> night and it was uh, it was interesting. So. <laughs> it was. You're welcome. <laughs> Wish it could have passed, but <laughs> a little surprise, but hey, you know, we gave it a shot and um, off we go. So okay, meeting minutes. 
Any questions or comments on the meeting minutes? If there's none, we need a motion. A motion, we accept the meeting minutes as they're laid out. Second. Second. Seconded by Tom. Roll call vote. Dan Clark. Yes. Diane Goldner. Yes. Justin Dufresne. Yes. Kelly Marston. Yes. Tom Beals. Yes. And I will vote yes. Okay. All right. Um, bu -bu -bu five, Kimball Lane, RDA. Let me see if we have Michael Whalen with us. We do. Welcome to panelist. Hi, right, Mike Whalen here. Hey, Michael, we can hear you but not see you. That's fine. That's fine. I can, uh, well, I can fix that real quick. Hello. Hi, there he is. Super. Okay. All right. An RDA, five Kimball Lane. Uh, Mia and I visited the site uh, last week. In fact, Mia, I think, has been assisted you in putting together the, uh, the application. Yes, she has. So maybe um, one of you can fill in, fill in the commission what's, uh, what you want to do. Okay. So, yeah, on the map right there, um, the plan is for, if you're staring at the, uh, the front of the property, going off the, the left side about uh, 15 feet for an addition, and then going off about the left back half, um, approximately 10 feet, and then building up on it a little bit to make a bedroom in the upstairs. Mm -hmm. And uh, then making an additional, or uh, replacing the deck coming off the back, and that will probably be another uh, eight to 10 feet off that. And then the uh, mapped out there is the uh, limit of work around the uh, property, so all the machinery would go. And um, if the, uh, yes, yeah, so the wetland is in the back left of the property, approximately 90 feet away. So it's jurisdictional, but it certainly is a ways away from the property. Here we go. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> Mia, do you have some photos? Yes, let me pull those up. That's not the best one to start with. Sorry. No, that is standing. Okay. That's a good one to start with. Okay, let's just give you a perspective of where we were. Okay. So the limit of work, Michael, I think would be you said somewhere around that tree, the large pine tree. Um, I think it would a little be a little bit beyond that because that's where about the the new deck would end up. Yep. Okay. Well, let's get to that one later. Okay, that's the backyard. Now that's looking down the left-hand side of the property. This is the, the, let me get the left side. Right-hand side of the property. Yeah. So see the right-hand side of the property. This depression here along the fence, that's the wetland. It doesn't even cover the whole depression. Um, let me go back to the beginning. I'm gonna jump. Okay, so if we're standing up where Greg and Mike were, this is looking into the backyard. Um, you can see the depression. Can you see my cursor? Yes. Okay. That depression there is where the wetland begins and it comes from this state land over here and just creeps into the fence a little bit on the other side of the stone wall. It's about 90 feet away from the addition and maybe 70 from the limit of work. Um. How much ground disturbance are we talking about, Michael? Sorry, how much what? Ground disturbance. I mean, how much digging is involved? Are you going to be bringing in, uh, putting so it off? Off the, uh, off the 15 foot left and off the 10 ish foot back, there's going to be a foundation. Um, so the foundation will be set at those points and then uh, just footings for the deck after that. 
and that's going to be it. Okay. Can we see that drawing again that you had that shows the, the rough plan? Hang on, my computer's loading. Let me try again. Here it is. How's that look? Okay, that's good. So we're saying the limit of work is about 70 feet off the wetland boundary and the actual deck will be maybe 90 feet off the wetland boundary. Is that accurate? Yes. Yes. Okay. Questions, comments from the commission? I was just curious, was there any standing water in that depression when you guys were out there? I don't believe there was. Yeah. No, but there was a dominance of wetland vegetation. Yeah, I was just curious if it's sort of seasonally flooded or maybe not. I think no, no real comments from me, Greg. I think this seems like a like an RDA type type application, anyways. Um, Would you say ninety feet closest limit of work or uh, closest expansion of the? of the house and deck and then limit of works at what, 70 feet or so? Yes. So um, yeah, no real comments on my end. Okay. I have a question though. Sure. Um, this has been a very dry year. So it would be logical that there's not been much water back there. Has there ever been more than what they are telling us now? Um, I can answer that. So um, typically the only time I really see water there is uh, after winter time, there's a bunch of snow and it all melts. Um, it kind of creates a little pool right by the rock wall, the property line uh, with fences where uh, me was saying that it kind of creeps in. Mm -hmm. um, it's a very, it's a kind of a very steep area. So it just kind of is contained to that pretty much right where the rock wall is. It's like, kind of creeps right under it um maybe about five feet or so i would say i would guess and that's pretty much it but typically throughout the year it's pretty much dry thank you you're welcome anybody else all right let's see if we have any public comment here I don't see any hands up or phones. Okay. Um, so Mia, if this if we move ahead with this one, we still want some sort of um, erosion control devices there, correct? Yep, I'd recommend that as your special does, conditions it, and entrenched silk fence. Yeah, it does, it does kick down pretty hard to the left. Um, before we get to that, Michael, you had some more stuff you wanted to do, right? At the end of the property. You wanna talk about that? Uh, sure. So um, I think Mia had a picture of it. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay, so this is, let me see, am I muted? Nope. This is the entire backyard to the back right corner. <laughs> let me show you is this area. Yes. So No, that's yeah, not so, it. There we go. Yeah, that, yeah, that one right there. So um, that is the opposite side of the property where the wetland is that um, abuts my neighbor's uh, property line over there on the right side. It kind of dips down a little bit. There's a little rock wall down there. And um, I added uh, a bunch of rocks there throughout the years so my dog couldn't get under the fence because there was kind of a gap because it's kind of dips down. My question was, from the foundation, there's going to be fill that's going to be lifted from the ground. And if I would be able to pour some of the fill in there to kind of smooth it out. So it's not just a rock pile and kind of can make it a little smooth um, backyard to the fence line to kind of make it so it's not a floating fence there. If that makes any sense. How far off the wetlands would you say that area is? Um, 
Oof. I guess uh, I'd probably say maybe um, 80 feet. I don't know, Mia, what do you think? Maybe a little less? Um, I'd say 90 plus. Okay. I just I just measured it on the, um, the town GIS and from the wetlands to the very back corner is 100. And, but that's within that back corner. Okay. I can share that screen. Down here. So it's barely jurisdictional. Mm -hmm. There is kind of a flow channel right along here that leads straight to the wetlands. Um, so we had talked about on site, you know, just filling in that one little area, I don't think would, would even be jurisdictional. That would only be considered like an exempt activity. But if you were to take this whole area and sort of like cover the whole area and loam and see, that opens it to the possibility of migrating down this cut channel straight into the wetlands. Um, yes. But I think just filling that that little little area with the stones really wouldn't wouldn't even be a problem. Any comments on that? Um, I, I'm sorry. I got. I guess my question is: uh, Are we going for an order of conditions or a negative determination on an RDA? Negative determination. Okay. It's an RDA. I mean, so from my opinion, so it's so far away from the wetlands, and as long as, as me as me explained, as long as he kept it close, small to that one area, I have no issue with that. If it gets beyond that, then I think we'd have to come back to the drawing board, so to speak. Well, we're going to want to have something for uh, siltation device, anyways, even if it's a negative determination. I would assume, correct? Correct. So. Um, you know, if, if we have uh, siltation devices that are protect the wetlands, um, you know, and maybe a, a C shape, you know, where the wetlands is, then he can do that fill area and the wetlands is protected and he can get it reseeded and stabilized. Okay. So you're thinking more. It sounds like he's thinking, Tom's thinking that we wouldn't put the erosion control devices around at limited work. We put them around right. the, outside like the that. wetlands. Group. Yeah, correct. Okay. Yep. That way there, any of the material, you know, that's going to the corner, that area can be uh, filled and graded and what have you and, and seeded. And, uh, you know, the whole wetlands area is protected. <laughs> I don't know if maybe we want to go up the property line, maybe a little bit, Maya, towards the house. Okay. Yeah. That way there, you know, if there's a pile around the, ex, you know, the area where the foundation's excavated, it'll be protected. that's good tom gives him a little more flexibility while he's you know while yeah. you're building and stuff too as far as you know where you might spread some things out and stuff yeah well you got to truck the dirt down there with a machine somehow so yeah. you're driving back and forth on it michael how's that sit with you that actually makes a lot more sense to me i think that uh i think that's perfect Any more, save this plan. <laughs> Sorry, any more questions from the commission? I just had a quick question. It looks like in the photos, there's a bunch of logs or stumps. Hmm. Are you filling those in? Are you taking them out first before you fill? Um, I was pro I, I use those for the purpose of, uh, like I said, to not let my dog get out. So I'll probably pull the logs out and leave the rocks. Cause I don't want the logs to kind of just decay over time and kind of mess up the, uh, the grass level. That was so I probably be my, take the, yeah. Be my those yeah. Yeah. That sounds fine. Other than that, that was my only question. Hey, I don't see any hands up. 
So I presume we're talking a negative determination here with some conditions, correct? And the condition would be erosion control devices as outlined me or in the plan from mm -hmm. just our discussion. Yep, as shown on that plan. Am I muted? Nope. I make a motion to issue negative determination of applicability with the uh, with the conditions mentioned in Mia's fancy plan that she drew up. <laughs> Second. Second by Kelly. Roll call vote. Dan Clark. Yes. Diane Goldner. Yes. Justin Dufresne. Yes. Kelly Marston. Yes. Tom Beals. Yes. And I vote yes. Done. And Mike, I'm emailing you the revised plan right now, so you have a copy. Perfect. Thank you very much. I appreciate it, everyone. Thanks, Michael. Good luck. Stay close to Mia. All right. We'll do. Thank you. I missed right. the motion in the second. Who was that? Sorry. Motion, I believe, by Kelly. No, by, by Justin, seconded by Kelly. Thank you for a negative. Thanks so much. Okay. Uh, let's see. We will move Michael back. All right. Okay, uh, 57 Fisher Street. This is a continued NOI from, uh, from last month. We did not have any DP file number on at the time. And I believe we have Vito with us here, correct? I don't see Vito. Let's see. Yep, I don't see Vito with us here, Mia. Do we can we move ahead without him? Uh, we we could um, because there's really no issues. The DP file number has no comments. Yeah, we'll do it by any any sort of um, uh, graphic or a uh, yeah. from last month so we can refresh our memories here. Sure. This was the, this is on um, this was a failed septic system, a very tight lot. They were going to put in the front yard. Mm -hmm. And my only comments had been to confirm that they were accessing the site from the existing driveway um, and to add the condition that they street sweep. And they, they did both those things on the revised plan. And DP came back with no comments as well. Let me double check my notes. I think this was pretty clear from the last meeting. It was just no, no file number, correct? Yeah, and there were there really were there, there were no options. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty straightforward. Yeah, there's nothing in the notes that you guys were looking for. We were just waiting for the file number. Okay. Let me see if there are any any public comments on this one. I don't see anything. Any any concerns on the commission before we move ahead with this? We won't be called from last month. Okay, all right, so for 57 Fisher Street, then we need to uh, have a motion. This is an NOI. Yep, so close the hearing and then any okay. special conditions and the order of conditions. A motion to close the hearing. Make a motion to close the hearing for 57. Okay. Roll call vote. Justin Dufresne. Yes. Tom Beals. Yes. Diane Goldner. Yes. Ann Clark. Yes. Kelly Marston. Yes. I vote yes. Okay. So now we need a motion. I make a motion to issue order of conditions for 57 Fisher Street. No special conditions, just standard, I believe, right? Standard boilerplate with the septic conditions. Yep. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Second. Pick up by Dan Clark. Roll call. Kelly Marston. Yes. Tom Beals. Yes. Dan Clark. Yes. Justin Dufresne. Yes. Diane Goldner. Yes. I vote yes. All right. Uh, bu, bu, bu. Zero Hudson Street is asked for a continuance, Mia, correct? Yes. Um, I don't want to talk about it without the applicant being here very much, but I know that the issue on the table is really 
you and the applicant agreeing to the delineation of the wetlands. That's still open. Uh, well, I visited the site. We reviewed the wetland delineation and I couldn't confirm it. So they're going back to the drawing board and they'll come back with, um, with some revisions. Next month. Yes. We're just gonna make a motion to continue, correct? Yes. I believe so. Make a motion to continue zero Hudson Street to next meeting. Second. Seconded by Kelly. Roll call, Dan Clark. Yes. Diane Goldner. Yes. Justin Dufresne. Yes. Kelly Morriston. Yes. Tom Beals. Yes. I vote yes. Continue to June. June 14, me, right? Yes. Um, I know I have a note here of 161 Church that they delivered a plan to you today and they're not on the agenda anyway, so. I forgot to put it on the agenda. <laughs> so we would like to make a motion to continue to the June. 161 Church Street to be continued to June. Is there a motion? A motion that we continue 161 Church Street to the June. 14th meeting. Yep. Second. Seconded by Kelly. Dan Clark. Yes. Diane Gouldner. Yes. Justin Dufresne. Yes. Kelly Marston. Yes. Tom Beals. Yes. And I vote yes. And I've asked them to re-notify because they've been on the agenda over a year. It's been so, almost two years, hasn't it? Two and a half years. Well, their, their certified list of abutters was from October, 2019. And they got on our agenda in April 2020. So I've asked them to re-notify and I'll do a new legal ad so we can get everybody notified that needs to be notified. Good. Good. Okay. 333 Southwest Cutoff continuation. This is the UMass Memorial Eye Center, Brian Waterman. And I will bring Brian in as a panelist. Hello, Brian. I see your name, but that's it. Hmm. Uh, Brian, are you on mute? So I don't see your microphone or camera connected. Um, yep. So we may be having connection issues connecting his uh, accessory pieces. Okay. Can we also promote Greg O'Connor? He was the architect for this project last month. I'm pretty sure. Yes, Greg O'Connor. Well, get back in, I think. Hello. Hi, this is Brian Waterman. Are we up? <laughs> Can you hear me? Oh, no, Greg is gone. Hang on one second, Brian. Okay. We're waiting for uh, Greg Young just left the meet. Is he still there, Jim? I'm here. Oh, okay. I'm here, but I did something with my <laughs> my video. I, I've got to stop clicking things. Are we jumping to uh, our meeting next? I'm sorry, I just got back in. Hey, Brian. No, we're you're on with the uh, with um, Southwest Cutoff. Okay. Good. First of all, Brian, how are you feeling? You were not doing too well on um, sidewalk. Um, I'm thinking my new inhaler and uh, the prednisone are starting to make me turn the corner. I don't feel great right now and I'm tired, but uh, my breathing seems a bit better. So I'm hopeful. Thank you. Uh, All right, Southwest cutoff. Yeah. So 
Um, this was for the 330 square foot uh, elevator addition to the outside of the building. Um, we had done the site walk. I think at the last meeting, we adjusted one wetland flag. We had adjusted the uh, 25 foot no build and 35 foot offset. Um, the building is uh, still about 52 feet from the closest wetland flag. Um, I think everyone was fine with the project itself, but there were two outstanding things that I think we wanted to address. One was the maintenance of the stormwater system that was on site that was done as part of the overall baseball and the uh, 30, 333 Southwest cutoff building. Mm -hmm. um, so we could not find that any maintenance had been done since the construction was finished in 2015. So they hired uh, New England Stormwater Management. Um, they went out last week and they did vector cleaning on 14 catch basins, five storm scepters, and four area drains, and disposed of eight tons of material. Um, uh, they inspected everything, said everything looks like it's in good working order and all material was hauled off site and disposed of legally. Uh, that was from Jim Hayes at New England Stormwater Management. They're out of Westford. Um, so in the prior meeting, we had submitted that they had uh, signed up for an initial cleaning contract and then also annual cleaning to meet the stormwater uh, management permit and the O&M plan. So this was their initial cleaning and the report of what they hauled off site. Uh, since we don't know if the system was cleaned right after construction, I'm sure these catch basins had extra sand and other material in them. Um, they did clean a lot of units and disposed of eight tons of material. So I would imagine the next cleaning, um, we'll see a lot less since everything is stabilized, the curbs are in and now everything's clean. And so, um, that was one of the key components um, for this filing. The other was at the time we did not have a DEP file number. Um, that was issued with no comments and that was forwarded to me as well. So um, I think we've addressed the outstanding items. I'll turn it over to you, Mia, if you have other comments or, or the commission or. I think we also wanted a certificate of compliance. We had a partial, we were looking for a full, the request came in for the full. So if you want to address that during this okay, yeah, discussion as well. Now. Yep. Um, so the, the order of conditions for the ball fields and the 333 Southwest cutoff site, uh, there was a partial issued back in like December of 15. Um, there were a couple outstanding items were um, some curbing and uh, treatment sidewalk out front. Um, uh, let's see, removal of some of the erosion control barrier and just making sure some of the other areas were fully stabilized with grass. Um, I'd walked with Kale back in the day uh, to confirm the, uh, there was a question on an outlet from one of the um, storm drains uh, where that came out, which is at the base of that really tall uh, retaining wall. Um, some of the areas that needed to be touched up with grass, that was completed. Um, we did notice on our site walk that some of the old original erosion control barrier was not taken out. Um, so what we did is we filed for a full COC because one, that order is expired at this point. And two, um, everything was done um, associated with that except for the stormwater cleaning, which has now been done. So um, closing out that order will allow, if you guys approve this project to go under this order, the remaining little bit of uh, existing silt fence could be re removed as part of a certificate of compliance for this order. Um, we did send along the as built plan. Um, the pad site up to where the, the golf course building still remains they were supposed to get a contract to, to finish that. They, they graded it, created a pad site, but then no one ever jumped in to do that building. So there's a small area of 200 foot riverfront down in the Southwest corner of that property. Um, so if anyone ever decides to do anything there, if, if they either work in the riverfront or do stormwater, they're gonna have to refile. So, 
um, all the work that was done to make it a pad site was done, except they didn't remove the building for whatever reason. I guess they just decided to leave it for the time instead of paying the cost of demo at the time. So, um, so we filed a, for a full certificate to close that out along with the, uh, the stormwater management that was just performed. Um, so again, that order has been expired since 2017. So there's nothing that can be done under it now anyway. So, uh, and the stuff that was associated with it ha has been completed to date now that the stormwater is maintained. So. Eight tons, I mean, that's a lot of material, Brian. Eight tons. Yeah. But, but that's from I mean, that's a lot, of, that's a lot, that's five, Big storm scepters. What was it? Uh, Fourteen catch basins and five area drains. So it's a it's a big system. There's a you know there's a system out in front of the Southwest cutoff. There's a very large system underneath the uh, parking by the ball fields, and then all the catch basins and area drains. So yeah, I would imagine if they had you know their deep sump catch basins, if they had you know several feet of wet sandy material in them that probably weighs a lot in each one justin may have a better idea on that than i do but yeah when i saw eight tons i was Oof. but if you start adding up that whole system you know with all the rain we've had lately anything that's in it was probably heavy and wet so um but they did inspect them and said everything seems to be working and now that it's cleaned it should work even better so I would imagine the next report, it'll be kind of a good test to see, uh, you know, they estimate up to about a ton when they're cleaning out something this size. So it'll be interesting to see when they do the next cleaning, how much material they take out at that time. I would imagine it's going to be significantly less. Okay, good. Good. Um, any commission questions? We'd like to, I think we have a two-step process. We'd like to one, um, <laughs> approve the certificate of compliance and then two deal with the uh, the new NOI and maybe roll any further work into that into that one so, okay <clears throat> any questions from the commission no comments I don't see any attendee hands up okay so let's deal with the, the certificate of compliance first <clears throat> so I'll make a motion to issue a certificate of Compliance for 333 Southwest Cutoff. The EP file number 2471059, correct? Yeah. Okay. Second. A second for that? Second. Second by Justin. Roll call. <laughs> Dan Clark. Yes. Diane Goulder. Yes. Justin Dufresne. Yes. Kelly Morriston. Yes. Tom Beals. Yes. And I vote yes. Okay. Now for the, we're going to close the hearing first, aren't we, Mia? The NOI. So um, let's have a motion to close the hearing. Okay. I'll make a motion to close the hearing for 333 Southwest Cutoff. All right, Tom. <laughs> there's a second. Second. Second by Diane. Roll call. Dan Clark. Yes. Diane. Yes. Justin Dufresne. Yes. Kelly. <clears throat> Kelly yes. Marshall. Tom Beals. Yes. And I vote yes. All right. The NOI for an order for 333 Southwest cutoff. Any special conditions required, Mia, from your perspective? No, there isn't. It's not even near a street, no permanent markers. Um, and I think we already have a standard condition about trash because there's that dumpster there. We brought up the, the idea that the trash was right there. Yep. Right. And then Remove taking the out the old, uh, old erosion control barrier. Okay. And remove old. <coughs> I think okay. that's it. Okay. We need a motion. Okay. I'll make a motion to issue order conditions for 333 Southwest cutoff. Second. Seconded by Kelly. Roll call. Dan. Yes. Diane. Yes. Justin. Yes. Kelly. Yes. Tom. Yes. And I vote yes. Great. Thank you. Okay, Brian. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right.
Um, don't go too far, Brian, because you're up again. Oh, the Ann Rad. <laughs> All right, let me pull that out. Uh, we next have an Ann Rad. <clears throat> excuse me, for zero. 95 and 97 Lincoln Street. We walked the site with Brian last week. Yep, we walked, I walked it uh, once with Mia to walk the entire wetland boundary. And, um, and then with Greg and Mia on Thursday <clears throat> to walk the, um, we walked into the isolated wetland kind of where we were uh, the school side side of the site just to see the character of the property and then down where the uh, historic tree clearing had been where the uh, historic house had been there's a low area there um that has been reported to hold water periodically um so i'll, I'll jump into that in a second but mia did you receive the dp file number this afternoon yes with no comments and i right. have your plan let me pull that up yeah you have the colored one And again, for the for the for public comment here, we are only approving tonight, looking at for approval tonight, the delineation of the wetlands. Correct. There's no plan in front of us other than the weather where the wetland boundaries are. Yep. All right. <laughs> Thank you, Mia. Um, so I'll start, I'll start with the, the, the site itself and the wetland boundary um, down to the southeast corner there you see the blue line there's an intermittent stream that flows along the uh the church property and also picks up uh intermittent flow from the interior wetland of our site and then discharges through a 15 inch culvert in the uh under lincoln street and then out uh to the east uh, along the lydia's way development um, so that's an intermittent stream. It's noted as perennial starting on the south side. Um, we submitted stream stats report that uh, shows that it's uh, intermittent. It just doesn't have the supporting drainage area. Um, it's approximately two to three feet wide where it comes in there. Um, but it, it's been flowing since we were out there and did the delineation in March. It's flowing currently, but um, that's not surprising with some of the rainfall we've had. Um, so we have an intermittent stream there. So the wetland flag number one starts at that corner. It follows a stone wall along that side. And then it, it starts to bump into the site. And you'll see the, you can see by the green line there in the wetland flag numbers one through, well, in this picture, you can see one to 55. It goes to 71. But you can see that it's a very jagged wetland line, which seems to play to the history that, you know, there was some historic earthwork out here probably, you know, 80 years ago or so. There's some very large white pines uh, and some oak trees on the site. So some of the, the trees have been here all, quite a long time. Um, we show in the front there, there was a historic building <clears throat> along this property that was shown on a record plane in 1948. I don't know when that disappeared, but there was a building there at some point on this property. Um, so the property, it had been worked. Um, some of the historic earthworks you can led to an isolated wetland in the central part of the site you can see there. Um, so that's a local jurisdictional wetland, isolated wetland. Um, so the bordering vegetated wetland, me and I walked the entire uh, thing. There's some pit and mound topography inside of it. Uh, there are areas of standing pockets of water. And then you can see intermittent stream flow that comes out of there. And like I mentioned, it ties into the um, intermittent stream to the south and discharges under Lincoln Street. Um, we took a look at some of the upland and wetland soils. It's, it's a pretty well-defined, uh, you know, organic surface layer underlain by, you know, Glade soils in the wetland, and then you you turn into a fairly bright upland soil rather quickly. So um, I think Mia was fine with the, the wetland delineation and the flag we didn't adjust. It. So um, again, there there been some discussion on uh, flooding in this. Mia, can you zoom up to right? You know the the bowl area we were looking at. Um, 
Yeah, that 298 contour there. There have been some discussion on whether or not, you know, there were some photos from, I believe it was like 2007 that showed some ponding there. Uh, me and I took a look in there. There's There are a few wetland vegetation plants. <clears throat> there was no standing water when we were there except for one tiny little spot where someone left a hole in the ground. But um, the predominance of, there are a lot of saplings coming in now that are uh, Quaking aspen and big tooth aspen. There's uh, what's uh, a ground cover that's called cinquefoil. These are all upland indicator plants. There were a few cinnamon fern and skunk cabbage. So the predominance of upland vegetation indicates that it's not a wetland area. Um, we ran an isolated land subject to flooding calculation and our engineer run that. And we submitted that data to Mia this morning to see if it meets <clears throat> the state ILS F requirement is a quarter acre foot and the local bylaws one eighth acre foot. Um, this came back at 0.01 acre foot. So it's less than the uh, 0.125 acre foot or one eighth that's required on the local bylaw. So it does not meet ILS F or state. Um, we also submitted some aerial photos ranging from 2008 to 2019 uh, in support that the, the there's a detention basin directly across the street <clears throat> associated with Lydia's Way, which is at this pretty much the same elevation. And the aerial photos support that, you know, there's water in that basin, but not on our side. So that seems to indicate again, that whatever photos were shown in 2007, you know, may have been an, a non-typical situation. Uh, I submitted some historical data on the rainfall and precipitation in 2007 <clears throat> for March and April, which is apparently when those pictures were taken. Um, again, I think that supports that this was a non-typical situation. Uh, you know, with frozen ground, if you get a two inch rainfall event, that isolated bowl, we're not arguing, could hold water. It just um, may hold water, but it doesn't meet the regulations as a resource area. Um, March and April of that year, we had temperatures under, you know, below freezing in March uh, around a two inch rainfall event. And April was over eight inches of precipitation, which is four inches above normal. So again, it seems to lend to a atypical situation. The things we saw when we were in the field just don't seem to indicate that it, if it does hold water, it doesn't hold it long enough to create a predominance of wetland vegetation and it does not meet isolated land subject to flooding. So I think what we saw in the field seems to be supported by all the other data. And again, the uh, engineering calculation shows that it's not an isolated land subject to flooding. So um, it's obviously been historically disturbing there. It is regenerating with secondary growth and <coughs> quite a few, <coughs> uh, you know, some invasives with knotweed and uh, blackberry and multiflora rose, but um, the aspens and the, the quaking aspen and the big tooth aspen probably will fill that area in over time. So we have two resource areas that we've identified on the site. One is the bordering vegetated wetland and the other is that central isolated wetland which is um, would be covered under the local jurisdiction. But Mia, given the size of that ISLW, I don't believe it's jurisdictional, is that true? Um, the, so there's the depression over here. Um, that's not jurisdictional. It doesn't hold an eighth acre foot and had a dominance of upland vegetation, but then there is an isolated wetland over here that did have a dominance of wetland vegetation. Okay. okay. So that one is jurisdictional. Yeah. Under the local bylaw. Right. Under the local bylaw, that one has indicators of hydrology and enough, uh, wetland vegetation to be classified under your local bylaw. Um, Mia, are you in concert with the flagging? 
the delineation. Yep. We walked the entire line. I can share some photos with you if you like. Um, you can see there were some areas where, you know, there's kind of a, a finger of upland <coughs> here. So we stopped and did soils up and in the wetland here, the same thing. Um, and then over here where we had another, you know, area coming up here, we did. So there were probably three or four places where we stopped and, and looked at soils just to make sure we were still on the right track. And the topography, if you look close, you can kind of see the topography follows it as well. There, it, it is like a, it dips and rolls. It's a disturbed site. Would you like to see the pictures? Yeah, put a few pictures up for the, for the commission. Sure. I think we've all probably driven by the site before. <laughs> this is the intermittent stream. This is the culvert that goes under Lincoln Street. Yeah. This is looking at the property um, standing at that stream. Um, so you can see the size of these pine trees and the oaks within um, and some back here. This is definitely an upland forested area. Um, again, this is the upland forested area. Up, we're standing, we're starting to go into the site to the right. If I'm right, Brian, to the right beyond that stone wall is the middle school. Uh, let's see. Do, 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 do. I think right over there is the middle school. Yeah, I believe. Yes, we're on the other side now. Yeah. Yeah. We're on the other side of the stream now. Yeah. Um, these are just that we took some soils on each side. I think this is just the first wildland. A lot of these pictures are just forest. That's this uh, That's this finger like up by Wetland Flag 41, 42 in that area, I believe. Okay. <clears throat> so you can see the dark organic surface soil there and then you get into the glade or gray sandy or subsoil. So that's the hydric soil within the wetland. And then I think you did have an auger of the upland soil. That's yeah, right. you can see there. See the difference. Brighter, brighter topsoil. And then you can see the bright orange uh, underneath, um, which is an indicator of a aerated soil or a non-hydric soil. This is a wet day. So even on a wet day, you can still see the difference when you're, yeah. when you're doing the soils. Yeah, it's pretty well defined. Yeah. This is the disturbed area. Um, you can see the multiflora rose. Um, this was within the wetland area nearby, around wetland flag 30. Nice picture. <laughs> Thanks. That's around wetland flag six. Yeah. This is the, um, that's knotweed. Yeah. Knotweed and some tartarian honeysuckle. Yeah, up on mm -hmm. some. I want to get the aspen. I think that's here. Oh, so you can see this is that pine knoll. Um, Greg, I think this is from when we were out there. So yeah, the that's... soils, I mean, the soils are very clear. This, this is not a wetland soil. This is a gravelly, sandy upland soil. That was this... by the test pit one and two in the uh, northeast corner, the unwitnessed testing we did um, last October. So yeah, as you can see, it's in the soil pile, it's uh, sandy and gravelly. They're not certainly a hydric soil. They did unwitnessed test pits. These were just exploratory test pits. They'll have to do new test pits when they come back with an NOI for any septic systems they propose. They'll have to do more test pits that are witnessed. Correct. And documented. I just thought I had taken pictures of the Aspen. Um, um, yeah, I thought you did. Let me see if I can find you it. Can, well, if you go back to that picture, you can almost... Yeah, I don't see it. Let's see. Yeah, I thought you took a picture of. That's this is from three. both days. Well, when you were looking in from that flag in the wetland there, we could I could see some of them in the background. Uh, oh, here they are. There they are in the background there. Yeah, right there. Yep, you can see okay. all the aspens coming so in. So the depression is here by the street. And so aspen are successional. So when something is disturbed, what comes in is the aspen that grows first. And it's an upland species and you have both quaking and big, big tooth. Big tooth, yeah. And the end, I mean, if you look at the, some of the historical aerial photos, some of the pines, I mean, they don't typically get that large if their feet are wet. So obviously someone dug there and they left a bowl. And if you get enough rainfall or certain seasonal conditions, it'll hold water. It appears to percolate pretty quickly because, like I said, the basin across the street 
if you look at the aerial photos, it's holding water at the same, even though we're about the same elevation. So there's, you know. Sorry to look at all these pictures. There's just one I thought I took where you could see the speckled dollar from the street in that depressed area that we're really focusing on that we wanted to make sure it was an isolated land subject to flooding. There's one speckled alder bush and that, and other than a few, um, was it the cinnamon burn or the sunset burn? But otherwise it was, you know, 80, 90%. And yeah, right next to that speckled alder was a red oak sapling yep. too. So yeah, no, I don't think I have a picture of it. <clears throat> and speckled alders are wetland plant, but there was just one. Yeah, yeah. I think questions you know, from the commission, comments or concerns. Members of the Rad. It looks pretty straightforward no, to me, yeah, right? Yeah, there were no braided streams. Um, the wetland generally followed the slope. There were no areas where um, where I thought the flag should be moved at all. Um, in fact, it, it was a conservative delineation. And I also wanted to point out on the plan, um, one more thing is that, if me zoom out here, we walked this line. We didn't go further back in. Um, so there could there could be more upland in here, but we're not accepting that as upland. We're accepting this as as wet from here back. Right. We know we know there's nothing we're going to be that potentially be developing. You know everything is we're looking at is up front here. So um, yeah, there, there's probably braided uplands. Uh, the DEP line shows a larger area going to the to the west, and then you know, flowing down to that part of that intermittent stream along the church and our property. So there may be other upland areas in there, but um, that's not really, We I don't think we need to focus on it because everything is really dictated by, we have, by what we have up front here. I'm sorry, you mentioned that ILSF, uh, the one that's flagged, that one meets our local bylaw, but it's not state jurisdictional? Correct. Well, it's an isolated wetland. It's not an isolated land subject to flood. Isolated wetland, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, under the, under, the, um, under the local bylaw for having um, indicators high hydraulic and predominance of wetland plants. Okay. <laughs> I mean, it's probably not, you know, if you look at the eight inches of the act, is it really meeting those? Probably not, but under the, the language of the bylaw, it is, it is an isolated wetland. Paint design will have to take the, uh, the bordering, the, the wetlands into account and its uh, jurisdiction. Right, that's why we've got the 25 and 35 no touch shown on there. So that would be confirmed as part of we didn't adjust any of that since we didn't adjust any flags. So the, that would be the, you know, the limit of uh, jurisdictional areas are shown on there, the, the 25 and 35. Areas. And the 100 foot buffer zone is shown in bright yellow there. <coughs> so certainly anything in the future is going to need a, a notice of intent. Sure. And like you said, you, you'd need to do witness testing and the local board of health regulation is not does not meet the DEP regulation for 50 foot setbacks to wetlands. It's 100 feet, and that's adopted in your bylaw as well. Um, so that's why you see the two test pits we did uh, to the side there, outside the 100 foot buffer zone. Just those were obviously, like we said, unwitnessed. <clears throat> but once we get the wetland line down, then we can, you know, concentrate on getting witness testing outside the 100 foot buffer zone. All right. Any more questions from the commission or concerns or comments? Let's see if we have any public comment here. Any public comment, any questions from, um, from folks listening or watching tonight? I don't see any hands up. Going once, going twice, done. Okay. So we're looking for a 
we're looking to um, approve the ANRAD as listed, Mia, correct? Yes, sure. Yeah. Do we need to close the hearing, Mia? I think, or is this I think not we do. A, is it a hearing still? I don't, I don't mean, know. <laughs> I don't remember. Brian, do you remember? What's that? Is an ANRAD a public hearing? Yes. Okay, yeah, so yes, we do have to close the hearing. Motion, motion, to close, motion to close the public hearing. <laughs> Thank you. I know, it all turns into a blur. Is there a second? Seconded by Kelly or Diane? Kelly. Kelly. Okay, Dan Clark. Yes. Diane Gouldner. Yes. Justin. Yes. Kelly. Yes. Tom. Yes. And I will vote yes. The, me the hearing is closed. Okay. All right. Thank Mich you very much. Of motion to issue a ORAD, right? For a yep. 0, 095 and 97 Lincoln Street. And you approve the wetland delineation as shown on the plans, right? Yes. Because yeah. you can always make exceptions. You can say, like, just as shown, or, but I, I think I'm recommending yeah. to approve as shown. Oh, I think it will look good. Okay. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Second by Tom. <laughs> Roll call, Dan Clark. Yes. Diane Goldner. Yes. Justin Dufresne. Yes. Kelly Marston. Yes. Tom Beals. Yes. And I vote yes. And who was the second there? It was Justin and then? Kelly, I believe. Oh, Tom, Tom. Beals, I'm sorry. Tom. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Brian, I think you're done for tonight. Hey, thank you guys. Take care. <laughs> Thank you. Feel better. Yeah. Thanks. Bye. All right. Let's see what else we got here. Um, I think we can move on to the conservation fund item, Mia. I don't know if Ashley's here. Let me take a look. Uh, there is somebody calling in. Is that you, Ashley? I believe if they're calling in, they can use star nine to raise their hand if they want to be yeah. identified. Yeah, there's no hand being raised here. Okay, we'll just move on and come back. Um, violations. Um, John Edward Drive, we had some dumping of yard waste, I believe. There were a number of violations. Letters were sent to the homeowners. Um, I believe most of them, most of the cleanup was done. There were a couple of outliers. They got a second letter, Mia. Yes. And I believe they may be here tonight. The first one is nineteen, John and Bird. That's Peter Larson. Peter Larson and Richard Clark are both here. So let's yes. bring um, let's bring them both in. How's that? Okay. Oh, wait, there's a hand up. I got a hand up. I got a hand up now from uh, 1978. So I'm going to go to this hand up first. Hey, Jim, I can't seem to bring that person in. Yeah, so for phone numbers, um, you can only click the allow to talk. They can't come over as a panelist. Um, I'm, not even, I'm not even seeing that. Okay, well, so I'll, uh, I'll allow them to talk. Um, so they are here, they'll just need to unmute. Okay. Could you unmute? There we go. This is, P this is Peter from 19 John Edward Drive. Oh, very good, Peter, okay, thank you. You, you, guys, you guys can hear me all right? Yep, but you're not the person I'm looking for. Are you, are you 19? I, are you calling in? I am. I'm. 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 19 John Edward Drive. Oh, okay. I've also got you listed as a, on the second one there too. So, okay. Okay. Peter Larson. Let's let's move. That's ahead right. Peter Larson. You guys can hear me okay. We can hear you fine. Okay. Good. So uh, you and me have have met a couple times and um, and you received yep. letters and Mia's going to do some nope, screen she, sharing. Well, we, 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 we've never we've never um, we've never received letters until now that we were aware of, and then the minute we got the letter, I reached out to Mia and had her out at the house to kind of explain what was going on and um, uh, what we were not supposed to be doing and et cetera et cetera. So, 
you know, there's a there's a brush pile. There's two piles out back. There's a brush pile that came mostly from the trees that were out back because a couple of the trees fell down and were on top of my fence. So I cut them down and got a bomb off my fence and cleaned up the back. And then I piled a pile of brush um, out back, which was obviously too close to the wetlands and not a, not not knowing that it was too close to the wetlands. So I, I told me I'd, I'd certainly cut that up and get rid of it. And then there's an area of grass clippings out back that was in the wetlands as well that we talked about cleaning up as well. So. Oh, Mia, has the cleanup been done to your knowledge? No, no, it has it has not been done. That that was the purpose of the meeting tonight was oh, okay. to kind of I guess give you guys my understanding was Mia explained to me that we were going to do a would discuss it and. That you're basically going to want a date when I can get it done by, and then have someone come out and invest and um, do it. So no, it has not been done yet. Okay. All right. If you if you see the pictures she's showing you, that's a picture of a um, a bush that was taken out and put back there, which I'll take to the town. We'll pull that all out and take that to the town and dump that at the town. Um, the brush pile, Mia, do you have the picture of the brush pile? Mm -hmm. Can you see it? No, same picture. It's uh, the, no, you're, you're doing that. That's the brush. That was that big boy. That was that bush I asked you to look at to see if the town would take that. Let me try. I had too many photo screens open. There we go. Can you see um, that? That's the, that's the grass. That's the pile of grass that we'll get out of there. We'll dig that all out and get rid of that. If you go to the, the other picture, Mia, where the brush is, I'll have to cut that. Uh, oh, no. you mean the sticks, the piles of yeah, sticks? The, the, yeah. That was a different day. That one. I don't see oh, it, it yet. it stopped. You guys... Sorry. Let me try one more time. Every time I open okay. a new picture, it makes me reshare. It's not a problem. That brush file right there. So if you see, there's a bunch of trees behind that that are down, yep. and that brush pile was from those trees. I'll chop that up, and I'll get rid of it. So Mia, we're looking to have we're looking to have this move beyond twenty five feet, correct? From the west. Yeah, I, 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 Greg, I'll I'll chop it up and just get it out of there. I'll I'll have no problem just getting rid of it all. So I don't have to move it to another spot. I'll just get rid of it because the gentleman, uh, Mr. Four Acre, I guess is the gentleman who owns this property. Who just just recently purchased it. You know, we're not allowed to dump stuff on his property, and we I certainly don't want to do that either. So um, we'll we'll take that we'll get it out of there. I mean, even though it's even though it's brushed from his property, I'll I'll get rid of it. I mean, I'm not you know going to complain too much about that. I just need some help. My my two sons are in college right now. They'll be home in a couple weeks, um, and they'll be helping. We'll get rid of it. They look forward to that too. So, <laughs> um, so what do you think? When do you think you can get get that done by, Mr. Larson? Um. Well, if you, you can give me a couple months, that would be helpful because, again, I don't know when they're going to be home because they're in the NCAA tournament right now, and hopefully that lasts for a little while. But, uh, you know, I'd like to give me a couple months and I'll have it done, if that's okay. I mean, if you need it done sooner, I'll, I certainly would figure a way to get rid of it sooner. But um, What do you think? It's I mean, fine. Yeah, is, we can. Is, is July 1 of these a reasonable date? It's fine with me, or we can even check with August. You want to do August first? Yeah, we'll can you do, if you give me in. August first, that would be great. Sure. So I'll, I'll email you around August, the beginning of August, for a reinspection. And if you need more time, just give us a call. Yep. Yep, no, and I'll call you, Mia. If I get it done sooner, I mean, like, like I said, I don't want to wait too long because obviously it gets kind of buggy back there when all the trees get in. And so sooner I get out there when it's a little cooler, it'll be easier to get rid of it. So. Works for me. Does it work for you guys? Yes. Sounds good. The deal. Uh, what are your sons doing in the tournament? They um they play for St. Anselm's College for lacrosse, and they just got a bid yesterday as the fifth seed. So they have, we're going out to Erie, Pennsylvania. Lovely eight hour oh. ride. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, that'll be fun. That's good stuff. Yeah. So they, they may be home Monday. If they lose, they'll be home Monday. So 
then I'll be able to get at it and get them doing the heavy lifting. <laughs> Super. Well, thank you for your cooperation. We appreciate it. For sure. No, you know, I, I have no, I have no problem. I apologize. I certainly did not intend to cause problems and did not want to put you guys into this position. So certainly, uh, you know, we'll take care of it. Thanks. Thanks for your cooperation and good luck to your sons in, uh, in the tournament. Thanks guys. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, do I, un do I, un I think if I do star six, I'll un You're done. Let me see. You are gone. Yep. Yep. Now I'm going to bring in Richard Clark. And we'll wait for him to come in and then we'll. Hey, Jim, you might, I need some help with um, Richard Clark. I'm not getting the options from my end. Not a problem. Oh, it looks as though for some reason you are not co-host anymore. Well, when I, I, um, I dropped myself out and had to come back in a while Oh, ago, okay. So. That was, yep, that must have been what happened. So um, I'm moving Richard over now. Um, Greg, you are co-host again. And um, Ashley Davies is in the, um, is an attendee as well. Great. And I promise I'll stop clicking on things. So, okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, Mr. Clark, you are muted. How's that? I can, that's, that's, that's good. Good. All right. Um, well, you heard the previous call with, with your neighbor there and so forth. And, uh, and we're looking at, can you see the photo that Mia has up? Yes, I can. Okay. All right. All right. I mean, any questions from your side or comments? Uh, no, we, we removed all that. Um, we took care of the brush and, uh, I took the compost out and we're contracting our compost now. Great. Did you pull it back or did you actually remove everything? I removed everything and I availed myself of the dump. Okay. <laughs> Very good. This is the after. He's, the work's already been complete and re-inspected. Looks nice. Great. Yeah, that's, that looks really good. Good. Okay, any questions from the commission? Any concerns? Yeah, you're good apparently, right? Yes. No, looks good to me. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Clark. Yes, thank you for your help, cooperation, sir. Okay. Um, so we can. So this one's resolved. As long as you're resolved, okay with I'm putting Mr. Clark back to attendee. All right. Yeah, that was a nice job there. Oh, I can stop sharing. It's so nice. We just leave it up as our background. All right, so let's go back up to let's go back up to the conservation fund and Ashley Davies. Let's bring Ashley in. Okay, Ashley, you are there. All right, can you hear me? We can hear you, but not see you. That's okay. Okay, great. <laughs> Works for me. <laughs> Just the way you want it. Fair enough. Yes, okay. exactly. <laughs> okay, so. Um, uh, yep. Conservation fund money for 432 Whitney Street. Yeah, so um, what we're asking for today, the Open Space Committee being the we, um, is money to fund an appraisal of 432 Whitney Street, which is owned by Santa Anza. Um, this is across the street from the property that has been the subject of litigation and various other issues in town. Our thought with this one is... Um, it's on the market for a significant amount of money. And, and so we want to get an appraisal just to see what's a realistic amount that we could potentially offer here. But the, the idea with this is that this is another piece of property that is in between industrial area and a residential area and could potential, potentially provide that buffer that is currently what is hoped for on Bartlett Street by some of the residents over there and could potentially avoid another situation like that. Um, but not only that, uh, it is very close to the aqueduct and um, could provide an additional trail loop with just a short, um, a short walk on the road um, from the aqueduct trail. Uh, and it does also border on DCR land and some significant um, wetland and river areas. So um, not too far from Acibit River. So it, it, there are many reasons why this is potentially a good purchase. 
Um, the issues that we saw are, you know, it may not be viewed um, in the best light to financially support someone who's caused issues to our town, um, being the landowner. Um, but at the same time, there are reasons to look past that and protect this so that it doesn't become something worse. Um, the other thing is that, you know, we want to we want to get a, an appraisal to get um, you know, a realistic idea of the number here so that we could see do we want to spend money here or do we want to save it for potentially a better property? Say if Bartlett Street were to become a potential conservation purchase, do we want to save money there? Um, but at this stage, we just want, you know, we want to get that due diligence done, see what the value is here. And so that we have the option um, to make an offer if we decide to do that. What's on the market for actually? Is it like 1.2 or something or? Oh, it's in that ballpark. Yeah, around a million. 1.7. 1. 1.7. 1. 7. Oh, much higher. <laughs> yeah, it's like 30 plus acres, right? It's it's sizable. Yeah. Sorry, I yeah. didn't um, I didn't do all my homework before I came. I guess. I have okay. it We've walked the. I've, I've, well, most, I've walked the property multiple times. Um, there you go. With, 24. Mr., with Mr. Anza, without him, and uh, um, it's um, it's an interesting piece of property. So. Yeah, me. I haven't been out there, but Mia said that she'd walked it and. Um, gave us kind of a description of the property. Just I nice. don't believe we have access to you, right? You, we, we can't go on the property, right? We just have to request it. Right. Yes. We do an enforcement order outstanding too with him for that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. And, and again, we're looking for some, a couple thousand dollars or a few thousand dollars just for the appraisal at this point in time, actually, right? Right. I think Mia had up to 5,000. The quotes that we got were, I think the one that will go with the, the lower quote was under $4,000. Okay. Any questions from the commission or concerns or comments? I'll just say I support it. I think it's a good idea just to get some more information. It doesn't commit us anything to specifically at this point, just right, right information. Okay. If, could I ask something? If, sure. the, if the town does decide to buy, what is its proposed use or uses? Mm -hmm. The idea is that we would probably put in a trail loop there and have it um, on our trail map so that people are walking the aqueduct. They could go over there and um, might be another loop. Um, another thought is that, you know, this idea of having a dog park in town, this could be another location for that in addition to providing a buffer to the wetland resources. So it's big enough that it could provide a couple of different uses. Can help, Diane? Yeah, I was just thinking, you know, okay. one of the things that's, that's kind of missing over there because of Mr. Anzo on one side and all of us in the development on the other and on the other buildings, there is not a lot of room left over for the wild ones. Uh, mm -hmm. Usually there's quite a few deer in there. Um, I would imagine um, the fox and smaller animals like that, but and then the birds they because he cut down all the trees and everything. So mm. if you were going to do something with it, I think that that should be taken into consideration. Yeah, that's a great idea. That would be a great project. That would be a great restoration project property. Perhaps there would be some funding we could get to do a little bit of restoration. Okay. Yeah, I like that idea. And in the back, it connects that DCR property in the back is the uh, Barefoot Brook Flood Control Facility. And it's, I've gone um, behind the industrial at Forbes Road and they have little, they, they keep bees back there. It's like a little Shangri-La. It's very wild, um, very overgrown. It's a nice area. Right. And not too far up connects to Acibit, the Acibit River. So. <laughs> And it's right where, you know, right just a little bit upstream is where Acibit, um, Northbrook, they all come together with this Barefoot Brook. So it's, it's a pretty cool area. I have a question, um, Ashley. What was the last uh, sale price on that property? Mm. 
I'll um, pull up the property record card. Yeah, I, d I didn't even look. Let me grab that. I think the uh, asking price is a little inflated. Yeah, 2009, it sold for $250,000. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So, I mean, obviously, we won't offer more than appraised value. And so, if it comes out, and we did discuss, you know, we don't need, we don't have to offer appraised value. We can offer lower. It doesn't mean he has to accept it, um, you, you know, but so we have to decide, you know, what we think it's worth to the town and he can decide what he wants to take. So. Yeah, there was a, a while ago, there was a buyer involved in that, right? That uh, didn't go anywhere apparently. There's, they're actually proceeding with that. Um, but there is a, an interested buyer. I spoke because we had to, before we move forward, we had to check with town council to make sure that it wasn't a conflict to get this appraisal. And he yep. said that there's no litigation with this property. Okay. So it would be okay to move forward with the appraisal as long as we had permission from the landowner. And so we reached out to the landowner who connected us with his lawyer, um, Mr. Goodbow, and he has written back, he's given us written permission to do the appraisal. And he called me this week to say that they are, they've drafted a purchase and sale. Um, you know, I don't know if that's moving forward. It's obviously that purchase and sale. Cause he, I was trying to help him with the 61 because the town is right of first refusal with check the land is currently in 61A and the town technically is right of first refusal. Um, and so, you know, he, two issues, he and I were trying to get permission for the site and we were trying to talk about that. And I direct him to the assessor for more information on that. But in the end, the purchase and sale is not a straightforward purchase and sale. Um, if it were a straightforward purchase and sale, we could use that value as the appraised value. But the purchase and sale doesn't, it has a lot of contingencies such as town's right of first refusal, conversion from chapter 61A and permit pending. That makes it very complicated and will not be used in the appraised value. So that was going to be my question. I, I know that it was part of the farm and it, I, I wanted to verify it. It is in 61A currently. Mm -hmm. okay. So then, Mia, go ahead, Ashley. If, if he has a purchase and sale, you're saying on both parcels? Both I don't know items? about the other one, but this one, mm -hmm. they're moving forward. Um, the lawyer's okay. drafting it. And we don't know if the buyer is going, like they're just drafting it, they're sending it to the buyer. So that process is ongoing, um, which is normal in conservation issues. Sometimes you know, we, the, they move in the parallel. Yeah, and but we're, we will require them to submit a purchase and sale that's not got contingencies in it, correct? Oh, for ours, yeah. Yeah, okay. If, if a, a purchase and sale with us. Definitely. No, but even even for this, for chapter one, chapter sixty one A purposes, they have to submit a, a bona fide offer that's not got contingencies in it. I guess um, the assessor said that if it had a lot of contingencies, it would have to be reviewed by a lawyer to assess the value of those contingencies. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, we do have to get down to what the real value is. That purchase and mm -hmm. sale value won't be used, and our appraisal right. might be used um, in that process in the right of first refusal. I'm, I'm not. That's not my department, luckily. <laughs> hmm. It's a different department in town hall. Okay. Um, Let's get so I have an opinion on this. Um, until we get a notification of the sale on the 61A, then maybe we shouldn't expend the money for the uh, valuation. Um, if it doesn't ever come to fruition on a purchase and sales, then why should we spend the money on an appraisal now. Well, I tend to agree with you, Tom. I didn't realize that this was in, in process. I don't think we knew that at our last meeting. I would say that if you were going to approve um, us getting funding to um, get an appraisal today, I would make it contingent on the, the right of first refusal. You know, if, if it comes to that and we have the right of first refusal, then we have to pay what the value is. So there's no need for us to get an appraisal. Correct. They have to figure that out. Correct. Right. So if, uh -huh. if the purchase and sale gets signed and it's for $1 million even, the town will still have first be first right at $1 million. Correct. Exactly. And and even if we had an appraisal, it wouldn't matter, right? So, yep. um, yeah. 
I think there have been other interested parties. People have contacted me over the past two years, um, you know, requesting meeting on the site, requesting plans, saying they had interested by real realtors, lawyers. I don't know what happened with those offers. So, you know, offers are, it's been on the market for a while. There have been other offers. It's possible this one might come to fruition or might not. So maybe we just wait, we get approval tonight, but but not to not move forward until after we see the result of this potential purchase. I mean, it's been going on for like a year. Oh, I can okay. look. Let me look in my emails to see. Maybe I can find because I think it's still the same interested party. Okay. I don't know if I have it. It might have been a phone call. Hmm. Try 432 Whitney. I think I think that was by phone. Someone was calling me and trying to schedule me to come out and they wanted to walk the um, the wetland resource areas. Yeah, I don't know. Going on for on a it. year, Mia though, right? This 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 PNS process has been dragging slowly. Yeah, and I don't know if that was the same applicant. I think it is the same applicant. Um, when I spoke with the lawyer, he's like, you know that we have someone who's interested. And I was like, I didn't really know that you had someone interested. I know people have called and, and they request the plan because we have that um, wetland delineation mm -hmm. plan from, I want to say 2012 or 2000. Here she is. Uh, November 2020. Mm. So it looks like in November, the most recent request for the plan for an interested party from a realtor was November, 2020. Okay. So that's not necessarily, that doesn't necessarily mean they're in negotiations. That's just a, a, a previous interested party. Mm -hmm. well, it makes sense to, to, and I guess this is the question for, for the commission. Does it make sense to have that appraisal in, our, in the pocket while this negotiation is going on so that if the negotiation falls through that, that an offer can be made from our perspective or not? And I'm looking for some input here. My, my thought is maybe uh, hold the cards to the vest for right now and, and see what happens. Um, the longer it's on the market, the more opportunity would be to, uh, you know, get it down to more of what uh, the realistic value of it is. Yeah, I think one caveat that Mia, well, not caveat warning, Mia provided last time was, you know, there was a property across the street or next door, I can't recall that, you know, Everybody kind of said the same thing, and and now it's an industrial building, which of course that's where, what it's zoned for there. But it's just to say these properties that look like there's no interest or that nothing will go forward, somebody will find a way. So if we really are interested, you know, maybe we act sooner. But that was four twenty nine. That was you know, the, the site and litigation. You know, the looking we have files here of oh, developments. Um, you know, there was a residential development, there was an industrial development, it was light industrial, like empty trailer storage. Um, they were defeated, um, they were denied. And then the owner eventually sold. And the, the person who bought it, um, you know, did not recognize the, the rules and regulations for the site. Mm. We, know, we know the history from there on. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we're right there. We're already there across the street at 432. Yeah. Um, right. That was my, we were actually talking about Bartlett Street. And I said, you know, it's, uh, it is, it feels good. It feels good to, to people to fight developers and landowners, but you, you want to have a cooperative relationship and uh, make sure that you're honoring their rights so that they don't just sell an exasperation to someone who doesn't follow rules and regulations. Um, so, I mean, but we already are here that 432 Whitney Street already has been altered and has an mm -hmm. enforcement order. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We could also table it for for 
a month or two actually that's an option also it's revisit it in july or something so yeah and if, if there hasn't been any movement then then we move forward then so are you waiting you're waiting to see if the purchase and sale moves forward yeah that's the the plan i think so mia because didn't you you mentioned that he just reached out right on that yeah about the same time that the open space committee the open space committee did an inventory of they, they keep an inventory of property that they might be interested in and we went through each single one and this one was on the list and it is on the market. And so they just discussed, you know, what the next step would be. If, if something from your, uh, from their inventory is on the market, they investigate whether or not they would do an appraisal. So. And what, is, what was the exact number of the lower um, quote from the appraisers? 3,950. Okay. So that's the real number we're talking. Any other comments? I mean, Dan, you're on you're on open space. What do you think? I think it's it's small money. I, if it were me, I would just go ahead and get an appraisal, see what it's worth. But that's my opinion. And Mia, what are some of the properties? It looks like it's pretty wet, even behind it. It's almost like some landlocked properties back there, are parcels that don't have you know, frontage or anything too, are those? DCR. Those are all DCR? Yeah. Yeah, all this is, this is barefoot brook water control, you know, flood flood control. There's a dam right over the line in Marlboro. It could be an interesting, you know, yeah. connect, connector to that. I know, so it's good, good connectivity, I guess, to those parcels too. I was making sure it wasn't just kind of a standalone site too, where maybe somebody else owned everything around it. But if it's DCR, that might give, give some opportunities there too. And this is the aqueduct. There's the aqueduct here, and then the railroad is here. So to get that connection, we can never connect people over the railroad, but you go and you're, you, you go up a steep slope. You're, there's a little gate right here, a little opening in a gate. And then you go and you can get into the property. Um, I guess maybe my thought, uh, uh, or maybe we should reconsider if we're willing to uh, get an appraisal on it, um, you know, are we willing to go forward and make an offer at what it's appraised at? I mean, obviously we would come back to you for that, but I see you're asking, are we get, why spend the money unless we're serious that we'd actually move forward if it was a reasonable right. price? That's yeah. kind of where I'm at. I, I mean, yeah. regardless of what he has it listed at and you know the number of realtors that have called on it, I mean, it's the same thing. It's, it's you know, who's putting the, the cash forward that uh, makes the wheels move, you know? Um, I think it's overpriced for the, you know, maybe 10 acres that's usable out of all of it. Um, but, uh, you know, we can only offer what it appraises at. Did, did I was kind of thinking something similar to Tom that, you know, a lot of people probably look at the listing and they see, okay, yeah, 23 acres of industrial zone land, you know, mm -hmm. I'm going to, I'm going to go for this or, you know, and then once they start doing their due diligence and find out that, you know, there might be a stream or river with a buffer zone, there's a lot of wetlands on it. There's a lot of topography on it. Once they kind of start laying out an industrial development on the site, I'm sure they learn pretty quickly that they're not going to get, you know, the desired square footage that they're probably looking for out here. So people are probably kicking the tires on it a lot, just based on the size and the, the zoning of it. But then, mm -hmm once they get into it a little more, kind of learning that it's it's probably not quite worth what uh, what they had thought originally. Um, and I think it's a, a great idea to purchase it as a buffer. Um, but uh, again, I think the, the purchase price is overinflated. But it could be that, you know, we come up with an appraisal that's a very reasonable number and it's straightforward and he, and he accepts it. 
Who knows? Right. Has there been any direct discussion with Mr. Anza in regards to the town making him an offer? Not from us. Mia, did we send him a letter? I can't recall. I don't think we did. I don't think we did. No. I can look. I don't think so. We just sent a bunch of letters. I may have sent may have sent one to him. Let me see. Can you get me back from screen sharing? Please, thank you. Okay. Um, I mean, it is, to Dan's point, it is fairly small money. We're talking four or 5,000 bucks here, right? To, to get a nest, yeah. to get, a, to get an appraisal. Um, and Tom's point also is valid. Is that the appraisal comes back at $600,000. I mean, are we going to go ahead, Ashley, you're going to go ahead and pull the trigger on that, right? So. Yeah, I mean, there's not, there aren't, <laughs> as much as it feels like, oh, this is just like a throwaway piece, there aren't properties of this size left in Northboro too, too, in too many places. And, um, yep. and the fact that there are, you know, ways to connect up with other trails, it can provide a buffer, it can provide a you know, buffer to the water resources and the residences. I, I mean, when you look at it at first glance, you're like, eh, this isn't very exciting. But then when you start to really pull, peel back the layers, it's, it's pretty cool. I mean, so there's nothing right now that's available for us to purchase. It's not like we're saving money for something that we think is going to come up any minute. There's, there's nothing on the horizon at, at, that we know of. So, um, yeah. So can we do this? Can we just make a, an inquiry to the owner and find out if he would entertain an offer before we go and do the appraisal? Yeah, no, I think that's a good idea. I think that's smart. Well, he, he knows we're do he know he knows we're doing it. The permission we requested is to conduct an appraisal with the intent to um, consider making an offer, because the original the original permission they gave us kind of said an appraisal with the express intent that they will make an offer. And Kathy and I reviewed it. And we said, no, let's change that wording that we're doing the appraisal with the intent that we would consider making an offer. So they know, they know our intent. They know why we're moving forward. The permission is, is, is expressed expressly there that we, the reason we're doing this appraisal is to make an offer. Did they, did they give any reaction to that at all? Did, when they no, I'm only dealing with the lawyer. It's tricky because we're in litigation, you know, so we, we have his contact number, but we don't, because we're in litigation, you know, when was that, Greg, we were out there like a year and a half, two years ago, someone was, you know, we had to let the town administrator's office and town council know that we had to reach out to him. And then we reached out right. with him directly and walked the site with him because right. of the litigation across the street. Right, right. Not on this piece of property, but the one at four. Was it 439? Yeah, litigation at 429. <clears throat> so it's not the typical homeowner that we could just call up. Well, I mean, my my I think I'm I'm on the school now. We should, we should move ahead. Let's get an let's get an estimate done, an appraisal done, keep in the pocket and make a and then hopefully make a uh, if it comes in reasonable, I'm not sure what that range is, but comes a reasonable, maybe move ahead with it. It is a, it is a unique piece of property. So, that's my personal opinion. Any more comments? No, but I, I think I'm with you, Greg. I think, you know, get it done. It's, it's not that expensive, you know, see what it comes in at. And then, you know, from there, I guess, make a decision, you know, at that point, who knows if, if you would entertain the offer or not. But I guess we, you know, we wouldn't know, I guess, until we, we take this step anyways. We could, we could make it a not to exceed situation, right? Where it's not to exceed, I don't know, 6,000 or some number set, whatever, whatever is reasonable. Yeah. And the open space committee had the exact same conversation that you're having, but even longer and more in depth. Um, so their recommendation, 
they're not, this is not a slam dunk. They're not saying, yes, let's go for it. Let's do it. They're saying, let, let the recommendation was let's do the appraisal to get more information and then consider it. They understand the weight of it, that this would require a lot of consideration. All right. So let's vote Can it I make here. A motion I'm sorry, go ahead, Kelly. Was that again, Kelly? Can I just can I make a motion that we approve the appraisal? You um, can. Do you have a not to Request exceed amount? A not to exceed amount? I think five thousand would cover 6, it. What do you think, Ashley? <laughs> yeah, five thousand. I mean it shouldn't it shouldn't go over four, but yeah. Okay, so not to exceed five, Kelly is the number. So you want to make a motion? I would like to make a motion that we approve giving them the money for the appraisal not to exceed 5,000. And to spend okay. the money from the conservation fund. That was yes. correct. Yes. Is there a second to that? I second. Seconded by Dan. Uh, roll call vote, Dan Clark. Yes. Diane Goldner. Yes. Justin Dufresne. Yes. Kelly Marston. Yes. Tom Beals. Yes. And I vote yes. Thanks, guys. Okay, you know, this, is a tr this is a tricky one. We'll be back about this. And don't walk the property. <laughs> I know. I will. I should, I should get out there. <laughs> All right. See ya. Very good. Thanks, Ashley. Good night. 1.7, huh? My God. <laughs> hmm. Holy moly. Yeah. All right. Um, Informal discussions. We have a proposed boardwalk footbridge on Howard Street, and that's a Mr. Dufek, correct? Yeah, I'm trying to. I don't see him. I don't either. Okay. We want to, it's informal. Do you, we want to move on from that, Mia, or do you know enough about it to, okay, move on? No, I don't. I don't know much about it. Moving on. Um, increase setback requirements to slopes greater than three to one. You provide some information to us that says that we have the authority now to be flexible if there are certain circumstances in, in place. That's right. It's already in. I'm gonna, I can pull up that section if you'd like in the bylaw. I had it up. Sorry, let me just pull it open again. Okay. So you'd ask me to draft some wording about increased setbacks um, when the slopes are greater than three to one. And that's here, it's already in section 4.2.3 general performance standards where you have your, 20, your 35 and your 25. You also say at the end for projects involving steep slopes, erodible soils and extensive disturbed areas um, or hydrologic conditions likely to promote significant erosion, the commission may require a wider undisturbed buffer to ensure protection of wetland resource areas. So my question to you is if you feel that this is sufficient um, I think it is. Um, I think you can you can exercise this if you'd like. I feel like the wording is strong enough here. But if if you'd like something more, we can look at adding more to it. I, I think that's why we put that in there in when we you know went back and re revised all of these was so that if somebody does come in and proposes a one to one for you know push them back or or say no. I'm good with it as it was written, but. I think the language is fine. It gives us the ability to be more strict if we want. Any other comments? Anybody think that's not appropriate or not sufficient? Mia, what section is this in? Can you back up just one second? Sure. 4.2.3 of the regulations. Okay. okay. My only comment would be from a, from a formatting perspective, maybe break it out to a separate paragraph or something. We could do that. Just because it gives, gives it a little more visibility that way. We can make it section 4.2.4 .4 and say for projects involving steeper slope. And then it might be good, so it's not buried in there. It yeah. just kind of highlights it a little bit. Because I think having the flexibility is good. I mean, if we had a, you know, say it was a blast rock slope or something like that, that would be very stable 
anyways, you know, I, I don't think we would have that too often, but you know, you may, may say that's okay because it's a, a pretty stable slope, you know, versus, uh, versus something else. So this just gives us a little bit of flexibility, I think, which is okay. Are you still, you're not seeing a word doc, right? Nothing. I'm going to share the we word doc. Okay. Okay. So it would look like here, and that should be 4.2.4. And then I think we should make this, this is the presumption of um, alteration from pesticides and fertilizers. So that's kind of separate. So I figured we could make that 4.2.5. Does that look right? This is the change. Four is this four is the flexibility to based on slope and five is the pesticides. Yeah, furthermore, the resumption of wetland resource alteration from fertilizers and pesticides may be overcome by providing qualified technical data. Um, just because it's separate from the, the slope issue. And what you'll see is I'll cite this in my staff comment email. I won't say, go ahead and pull those back. I'll say the commission you know, due to the highly erodible soils and extensive dirt or these, or this one-to-one -one slope in this area, staff recommends that the commission exercise section 4.2.4 and require a wider undisturbed buffer. And, you know, cause usually I send them my comments, they make some edits before the meeting and then they bring you revised plans to the meeting so that there's less to cover at the meeting. And that's just that they don't meet any of the regulations. Uh, this is more of a subjective, you know, you have the discretion. So my comment will, will just say, the commission will likely require a wider undisturbed area. Uh, Kelly, don't you have something like this in Westboro or already in existence? Yes. Good. Have you ever had any, any court challenges to it? Not that I know of, no. But we, our, our regulations are very, we, we have a lot of, of say, so no. I, I think uh, bullet pointing them and, you know, uh, giving them specifics works. Okay. So if this is the change you'd like to make, which is just bulleting them. I think it should still be voted. Okay. Oh, should, we should probably advertise it right on the agenda as a change to the regulations and vote it then. For, for June. Yeah. The next okay. meeting. Agreed. June vote. Okay. All right. We move on, Mia. You ready? Yes. Okay. The Central Mass Mosquito Control Project. That was Todd. Um, and Todd he's not up, here. And he the meeting, huh? Okay. Yeah. He had requested that I put that on the agenda. He had some questions about their projects. And I don't even know what his questions are. Okay. So we. Not one to try and read Todd's mind, we'll just move that to June. Yeah. Um, the con special conditions spreadsheet review, you, you sent out that to us. It's voluminous. You're not looking for action. That's for, that's just for our own edification. That's right. If it, we, I mailed it out last month, emailed it to you guys. If you have any questions about anything on there, um, otherwise you can use it as a tool when we write our special conditions. Those are the conditions, those are the boilerplates I use to pull from. You know, so you'll see there was one that says like replication and restoration. I just took that boilerplate and modified it to be specific to 90 West Main Street. You know, so they, they were replicating BLSF. So, you know, calling it a, you know, replication area obviously isn't pertinent. I could just change a couple words. Um, that is it on the agenda, I believe. I've got one to add here, Mia. Okay. Um, the stormwater bylaw. Oh. Now that was approved at town meeting, correct? It was. So we're going, what do we, should we expect something at some point in time to start voting on or taking responsibility for? So it has to get approved by the attorney general um, and it wouldn't go into effect till July 1st at the earliest. Okay. Um, but we have to, 
wait for attorney general review that's supposed to take 90 days. Um, when I did it in Paxson, it took like, I don't know, I want to say six months. And then if the attorney general comes back with any, any changes, um, there is a statement at the end of the bylaw that says that we can enact the bylaw without, like if, um, if not all part portions get approved, we can enact the portions that do get approved and then go back to town meeting again next year with any changes the attorney general recommends. It will point on that for the town. Is that you or Fred or? It's Fred, but it will transition to me. Okay. Um, so I guess we just wait. We just sit and wait to see where we are on that one. Yeah. Okay. That's all I have. And we forgot to do one. It's a duplicate certificate of compliance for Route 20 Tomlin Road and Davis Ave. Map parcels 98 2, 10, 1071, 1083, 1095, 1065, 6, and 7. DP file number 247 884. This is for Shops Way. Um, there were, I think, three certificates of compliance issued for Shops Way. None of them were ever recorded. Two of them, I still have the originals in the file. And they'll, the, I don't know if they're going through financing or changing management company. They want to get them recorded, and we don't have an original for this one. Who's administrative? Yes. They just it's sold it. I think I read that they just sold it. Oh, so that must Off be it. Way? Yeah. The whole thing? I think I read, yeah, something big, 150 million or something like that. I thought I saw it somewhere. <laughs> it's sold. Okay. So if there's any, any questions or comments by the commission, we'll start with that. I believe we have one attendee left. Do they have any questions, any public questions on that? No, I think, wasn't that all for the uh, sewer main? I don't think this was a sewer main. I think, oh no, no, this was a sewer main. You're right. Yeah, that's the sewer main that went all the way down, the yep. force main. You're right. Yeah. Okay. okay. So it was issued, voted and issued, um, but we just don't have an original. We probably mailed them the original and never saw it again. So let's go to motion then. Okay, so I'll make a motion for a certificate of compliance for Shops Way, the multiple street name. It's 247884. Uh, awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Second. By Justin. Roll call. Dan Clark. Yes. Van Guldner. Yes. Justin Dufresne. Yes. Kelly Marston. Yes. Tom Beals. Yes. And I vote yes. And right. is everyone aware that the change, the proposed change to the bylaw to allow certificates of mail did not pass at town meeting? Yes. People surprising. Have spoken. Surprising given, I mean, you know, it was not seismic activity we're looking for, but yeah. it is what it is. Yep. The public has spoken. We'll move on on that one. And I also want to thank Kelly for getting up there and speaking. Yes. <laughs> Kelly, you did a nice job avoiding the pitchforks and, and burning <laughs> hay that was being thrown, <laughs> thrown at you. So. <laughs> they were lines. There were lines at the microphone. They did. I was like, oh, no. <laughs> there was no lines for other questions. I was worried. Uh. OK. Uh, Mia, anything else you have for us? I mean, next month we're looking at um, June Zero 14th. Hudson Street oh, and yeah. 161 Church already being bumped over. Mm -hmm. Anything else you know of coming in? Hmm. I mean, we might get something for Lincoln Street. They did go to design review with a preliminary design. So they may be ready. We might be getting it in. Okay. They didn't give me a timeline on it. All right. Okay. Oh, hey, uh, quick question. What have, did anything ever come with the, uh, the boardwalk thing around uh, the pond at the uh, senior center? Oh, there was the, uh, yes, the- um, The accessible the, uh, loop? The tarred piece, yes. yes. The tarred? Well, they want to put a trail around the senior center, right? Oh, yes. Yeah. So they, they, we did have a volunteer group come in um, from Verity Opportunities. They wanted to do an Earth Day cleanup. They met with the Trails Committee. 
and they raked in the first loop that goes around the outside of the parking lot up to the pond and then connects to the Goldfinch Trail. But they did a nice job because there was a lot of boulders, like half buried boulders. So they were like taking those out with crowbars and shovels and smoothing it. And we've already gotten our first request from the senior center director. I just connected her with Forrest Lyford. He leads a lot of hikes. He's a trails committee member. He's also a member of the historical committee uh, or commission, Northboro Historical Society. He's a member there. Um, so he has a lot of knowledge. He's also a retired geologist. So he, he is connected with the senior center. He's gonna, you'll see it in their bulletin that he's gonna lead a hike. Um, and it's not fully accessible. It's like a more accessible than usual trail. We tried to smooth it and rake it in. So the first- oh, You were referring to the, to the ADA compliant trail, were you? Yeah, it's not ADA compliant. We're calling it like a, an accessible trail. It's not, but it's not ADA compliant yet. Is, is that the issue? Yeah, were they not able to get that grant then? Mia? No, they didn't get the grant. Okay, that was what I was curious. Yeah, the Mass DOT grant. Yeah. But we're going to try again next year if they still have the shared winter streets. And we can also try for a trails grant. So, thank you. Sure. Anybody else have anything? Yep. Any violations in your, uh, in your watch areas? Keep your eyes open for that. It is the season, right? It is the season. Uh, 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 all right, I got to ask, what's the trail camera update? <laughs> oh, two, two updates. No, uh, so you heard about the vandal, right? No. No, oh, I haven't told you guys yet. So um, the trail cameras went up and then I estimated they'd last about two weeks for batteries and, and disc size. And so just like 13 days in, I was about to go and grab the cameras we got a call from the Northboro police that someone was vandalizing Pisca and had moved down to the Green Street parking lot and was spray painting signs and cars. Um, and so the trail camera we mounted at the Pisca parking lot actually caught the suspect. Um, nice. He also hit a parked car and his license plate fell off on Green Street. So it's, it's not like ours is the thing, you know, but it definitely helped. Um, and then the suspect was asked by the police to go back and clean up. The police asked me to assess the damage. When I went out to assess the damage on Monday, this happened Friday night, I went out Monday morning and it had already been cleaned. Um, so he went out and fixed it. And then I reviewed all the trail cam footage and there is just not a single, not only is there's no suspicious activity, there's no wildlife. It was a single blue jay. Nothing interesting is happening up there. Yes, because of all the human activity. Oh, yeah. That's true. And then the Trails Committee would like to improve Watson Park. And that's an area owned by the Water Department, but you guys manage it and it has wetlands. Sorry, I got a tickle. <coughs> so we made a plan to do all sorts of just clean up. We're going to try to get the trash out of there. It's going on our Eagle Scout list to maybe put a bench and to replace some of the broken boards on the picnic tables. And then trails committee asked me to put trail cameras in. And so I still have three in the office. I know I'm not looking forward to that. I had to order new SD cards. Um, it's like I mentally block them from arriving because I got to notice they arrived, but they're not here. So I have to kind of track them. And so I'm getting a, like a couple weeks reprieve as, as uh, WP Mason tracks down my SD cards. Cause I need double SD cards. Cause once I mount the camera, I just trade out the SD card. I don't. Um, hey, Mia, before camera. you put the cameras in Watson Park, you may want to talk to Chief Liver. Yeah. Oh, because yeah. Because there's some, there's some history there. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm hoping just the sign, there's a sign that will say this area is under surveillance. And then I'm just going to point the camera at the parking lot. I'm not going to be like embedding them in the woods. Yeah. So. Okay. Well, maybe, that'll, maybe it'll be a deterrent. But that's the, what the sign the sign could do it itself you know yeah. that could, that could, yeah. and we're looking at trying to get it repaved the trails committee may come to you right now i'm investigating it's a state boat ramp so i reached out to the um, fish and wildlife public boat access office we do have an agreement with them but i don't have a copy of the agreement um so he they're trying to figure out who's responsible because you know it goes down and there's a loop that loop is paved so that you can bring a boat down there 
And right mm -hmm. now it's completely inaccessible. They couldn't plow it this winter. The pavement is completely deteriorated. Um, so trying to check with the boating office, DPW estimated it would be about $25,000 to repave it. And they do not have that in their paving budget this year. Seeing if the boat, the boat access people might have it at the state. If they don't, we may be coming to you for a CPC project to repave. So if you see some improvements, and we're also working with, hopefully with the garden club or some Girl Scouts to restore the, restore and or expand the butterfly area up by the street. They've done that before. Yep. Yep. And the goal, I found a news article from when it was put in, in the nineties, is the goal was always to try to expand, you know, that this was just a starting point. Anybody else have anything? Nope. I'm good. Uh, June 14 is the next meeting. Anybody have any known conflicts at this point in time? <laughs> Things do change and come up, but. Not that I'm aware of. But... Okay, fair enough. That's how we all are at this point, probably, Tom. So. Um, tomorrow is voting day. Don't forget to vote. So. All right. Then if there's, without further ado, is there a motion? We need a motion to adjourn. Second. Everybody, everybody, seconded by everybody. Seconded by <laughs> Diane on that one. Uh, roll call, Dan Clark. Yes. Diane Goldner. Yes. Justin Dufresne. Yes. Kelly Morriston. Yes. Tom Beal. Yes. And I vote yes. Very good.